Sparks, Relationship Sparks uh, by uh, Nirasha, the Smiling Guru. Well, you know, Gandhi used to say that you, we have to be true to ourselves and we have to be true to our vision. Because if we are true to our vision and if we make sure that we start it now, uh, then we would actually have a very happy life. Now to help me and oh, to help me explain what vision is in a relationship, I have these two wonderful people that I grew to met painfully. <laughs> I'll say painfully. I'll say painfully because Afro and Far are my personal trainers. And they have been working us, and I'm very proud. Firstly, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And, <laughs> yeah, and, and the second thing is, um, I'm so glad that we actually, I, I actually started this journey with you guys because it, it's made such a big difference. And uh, I know today we're not going to be talking about exercise, no pain, no gain. We're not talking about <laughs> all of those things. We are actually going to be celebrating something very special. You guys have just gotten married recently. Wow, yeah. So how is that going? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think, um, do you want to start? You can start. Okay, um, yeah, great so far, I'm loving it. Um, it's weird to think, thinking back from when I when obviously we were engaged, um, and then we were planning the wedding, and then being married, and I had a ring on my finger, because I, I feel proud to have a ring. And I, I said this too, doesn't it? I feel different. It did, yeah. I was like, I really feel like... You like being married. I like being married. I like being married. I like, I I like saying I'm a wife. Yeah, I, I never felt like that before. I've never been married before, but yeah. He is a keeper. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it was yeah, I, I love being married. Um, it's only been five weeks, so you know, most people think oh, it's too early days. But I, I think if you keep working at a relationship, it's only going to blossom even further. Oh, so definitely. Just... And for how long do you guys know each other for? Um, coming February, I think, is four years. Yeah, yeah. Leap year. Yeah. Four years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Leap year, leap year. Four years. 29th of February we met, yes. Oh, wow. Yeah. We met before, at our first date. Well, first date. We knew each other, yeah. but didn't mm -hmm. quite. Oh. We knew each other for a year before that, or was that the... Less than that. Yeah, less than yeah. that, six months, yeah. And weeks. I know you both, you both started uh, this, your business, yeah. uh, Great City Fitness. Now, Great City Fitness is one of the fitness training programs uh, that both Farah and uh, Afro had designed. It's very, when, when I first saw it on yeah. Facebook and when I saw my friends talk about it, um, you know, Grid City was very catchy, firstly. Roll your name. Who came that. up with that? I came up with the name that you yeah. Yeah. Yeah, very, very that. catchy, <laughs> uh, being in Molten Keynes. So, how long did you guys start the business for? So. How long ago? Yeah, how long ago? Uh, it's coming up to four years. Oh, three three years. years. So it'd be three years. November 2016 where I had a first client. First two clients, door. yeah. Wow. That must be nice. Was that a Definitely. scary moment? Was that a very, oh, very scary moment? Yeah. Yeah. Your birthday, I, I was like, yeah, I was Send thinking, why would you trust me to train you? Because I've not trained anyone beforehand. I would train 10 people part of our course. Um, but it was just like, it was just amazing that they're here and they're looking up at me and thinking, are you going to make us healthy? and nourished and um and i was like yes i can i'm not going to show you that inside uh, but it was amazing those first two people are like opened the doors for my limiting beliefs and and from there it was just learning non stop oh that is amazing that is you know it's always nice to see people grow and it's more important and it's so lovely to see couples growing and you guys just you know the ring went into the finger a few weeks ago yeah. Uh, but before that, your life actually started. So the ring was actually the ceremonial part. The house. ceremonial part. Yeah. The vision was always there always. for me, anyway. Yeah. From now, day one. Now I know you brought up. You know, today we're going to be talking about vision and why vision is so important. And for the two of you, why do you? Why did you think four years ago that this was going to be my vision, and our vision? And do you? Why do you think it was important to actually have that four years ago? I would say that um, the way I've been brought up with my values, um, I have two boys and I wouldn't enter a relationship in a casual sense. That's not something I've been brought up with. Mm -hmm. I don't see relationship in that manner. I see it as if I'm going to start something, it has an end. And for me, the end was to get to know him, but also for 
the voice to settle in well with their throat. Mm -hmm. And if that all works well, then I, I need to then take it to the next step, which was marriage, to then conceal the relationship and to make it permanent. And I always had that from day one. Because if you were to see our texts that we no. sent to each other, <laughs> I think I scared you because way. it's not very British style to start talking about marriage from day one. And my text to him, when you know when you first get in together, you, you send me a lot of texts, don't you wait for the text to come in and all of those, <laughs> yeah. all that jazz. Um, I, um, I, said, I spoke about marriage very quickly uh, because that's what I believed in. And I wanted to make it very clear, this is my intention. Um, I'm not looking for casual, I'm not looking for a friend, a male friend, I don't need any of those. I'm quite happy to be by myself. But if you're going to come in as a partner and share my values, my vision, then this is what I'm look looking for. And so it's very clear. In fact, I might have scared him off a bit. Yeah, but I was happy with that. But yeah. Oh, I'm still here. <laughs> That's a good start. Yeah. I, 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 I just kind of like, wow, okay. She's, she's to the point, very direct, and never had anyone talk to her like that. And I thought, that's actually quite refreshing for Benny. Oh, that's it, brilliant. It didn't scare me off. It just made me think, okay, wow, she's serious. So um, it made me like get serious too, I think. I don't think it, it didn't scare me off. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not really scared. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you didn't. You, no, you just took carry it on. Board like, yeah, she's fair enough. So, like, so, that's fine. So <laughs> your vision was, uh, so your, the ceremonial part that you just had now, that was one vision that this relationship is going to actually reach there, where we're going to be married and yeah. we are, you know, in front of our friends and, and so on. But when it comes to your business, now you've started that vision before the marriage. Before the marriage. Yeah. Yeah. And how did you actually come up with that vision? Did you guys sit down and say, you know what, this is where our lives are going to go and this is, the, this is what we want to do and this is where we want to see us go in that direction? How did that come about? I think like when we first started the business, it was probably way back when when I was in, we are both in Debenhams, I was not enjoying it. And um, I got to a point where I was actually getting a bit bored and mm -hmm. like a bit fed up, I needed to do more. I wasn't helping anybody. So I think when I talked to Farah about possibly doing the course, she was like, yeah, she always wanted to do something with the fitness and nutrition. So we did the course. We then, as soon as we did the course, we immediately signed up to um, Darren Tebenham's uh, business coaching. Yeah. So all this stuff is all about visioning and like what the future looks like and thinking five years from now. So it's almost settled in straight into that mm -hmm. um, pattern of thinking, so, which didn't, which made it made it easier to think further ahead than yeah. super mind. Yeah. So do you think okay. it's important for couples uh, that are starting new relationships to actually have a vision? Oh yeah. And it doesn't necessarily have to be business mind, you know, the business mindedness, but more so a vision that you share has partners yeah, and as a couple 100%. yeah i think like you have to have even if, if you have a business together or not or a relationship or just a relationship together but anything together even if you're like separate in business you still need to have a vision because otherwise you'll be on two different paths and you'll slowly drift away from each other and you will be disconnected and you won't connect which is what's happened in our previous relationships i think yeah yeah the vision was like, different and the vision wasn't sat down and discussed and yeah, I think I've we've learned from that previously, yeah. and we've got a, we've got a vision which is similar, and it's important to have a yeah. let work out. We work out together. I'm so glad that you said you know it needs to be similar. It needs to be you need to be singing from the same hymn sheet mm. as such. Yeah. Uh, because if you don't, you spoke about you start to um, drift away. To drift away. Yeah. And uh, for me, I always think about relationships as being part of an iceberg. And when you have a little crack in an iceberg, and if that totally breaks, mm -hmm. yeah. you start to drift away. And you know what currents, you end up drifting even further and mm -hmm. further. And to get back, it's very, very, very hard. And you can't even throw each other a lifeline to pull, you, pull each other back. So when you are setting a vision, what would be some of your tips that you would actually give some of our viewers and listeners? What would be some of the tips that you would actually, that you've used, you've tried and tested? I would say uh, the biggest one for us was we knew where, where we were going. So the passion for us, I could see that in the first few years, was, it was important that we both worked out because we both liked that. I know that we have business to do around fitness, but it, was, it wasn't just the business. It's yeah. about what do we want individually, and we're both passionate about that. So we knew that vision would always be, I know he was going to work out till he... In the, in the late 80s, like, oh, yeah, it's going to carry on. Right, and he knows that I was there. <laughs> and I, it's quite important for me to be with someone who's going to inspire me. Oh, yes. So for me, if I was to make my list of visions, I, I needed that. And, and I get that from him. 
So you need somebody to inspire you and to be yeah. the one that would lift you up and yeah, push because you. Because in your daily life, yeah. what is that your daily life is made of? And you know, those are the those are the things that we do. So like, oh, we have a date night every Friday. Really important to spend time together. Lots of people around us say to us, "You're always together. Mm. You do business together. Why do you need to spend time more than that?" But that's not special time. Us sitting down, oh, watching yeah, a movie, cuddling, holding hands, talking to each other, because when we are together with the business we are actually quite focused doing what we're doing um, and now we do a date night every single Friday night Fantastic. and we try not to um, cancel it so that yeah. discipline I've learned from Matt Rose and I think we, he's like no we're not what is it? it has to be a very good reason for you to cancel it and to give that date night so much importance shows yeah. one thing doesn't it that so we who want cracks to do this. the work when it comes to Making sure, like, you know, the discipline is there. I like how we... I'm, I'm, not talking, <laughs> I'm not talking about Fifty Shades. No, 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 I wasn't talking about either. I was laughing about something else. Uh, so <laughs> That's a different show, guys. Are you, <laughs> are you giving us I'm some not. of your no. time? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> right. Who, who cracks the whip when it comes oh, to the geez. discipline part of it and making sure that... You know, you, you keep your word to each other and yeah. you make sure that you you walk the talk. Yeah, I, I, I think a bit of both. So for date night, I think it's definitely, like Farah said, it was definitely me going, well, actually, what's more important? And I think sometimes it'll be me, sometimes it'll be Farah. You'll naturally go to whatever's important to you yeah. at that time and point, yeah. I think. So you would... I need that from him because I have two boys. So my, when you have children as you know your first love your priority was is them mm -hmm. um but as afro rightly said if you're going to cancel things always for them yeah. you're not showing them what a good role model couple looks like because i never showed Absolutely. them that with, with their dad so it's really important to actually set even when they're with us they normally go to their dad so even when they're with us we say to them oh, we're having a date night and we're mm -hmm. watching them you're more than welcome to join us but we don't want you to keep coming in like every five minutes i want to eat this you're going to have to help yourself this is like towards the end yeah. of the night. And that's a very clear message sent out also to the kids. Great role modeling for them. Mm -hmm. When they have their girlfriends or whatever they choose to do, they will probably take that into their adult lives. Do you know what? That is so interesting. And that is so, uh, because I, I have, we have quite a few young couples that I actually work with. And they find that when the kids come into their lives, mm. they have to change their lives. Mm. And, uh, and I, well, I had my kids when I was, uh, gosh, about 20, 20 years ago. And I can't think, and I won't believe that parenting is very different from 20 years ago to today. Because if you're a parent, the, the principles are the same, yeah. yes, the distractions are different. But uh, at the end of the day, you know, these young couples... Uh, they end up allowing the children to actually they they change to let the to fit the kids in, mm -hmm. and when it needs to be slightly different. So um, I know you have you have your kids, and um, you you need to make sure that you be the best role model for them. What are some of the other tips when it comes to the vision you set as a couple? Okay, so um... so you spoke about discipline. You spoke about making sure that you, you follow through you with what follow you put through. in place. Yes. Yeah. Other communications, I think, yeah, are massive. That's quite a massive one, actually. Yeah, it's huge. I mean, even yeah. little things like who's picking up very hard from school, who's yeah. helping to dentists, all these little conversations. Like, that's why on Sunday we plan our week out. So we sit there on a Sunday, and that's what I said about this show, and I'll let you know on a yeah. Sunday. Because, and we plan it on a Sunday, what the week looks like, and a rough sketch, and then we might have to adapt and adjust it. Mm -hmm. But at least I can look at the wall and go, right, okay, if I was in this, and then I think, right, does, do I pick Zane up or do you pick him up? So it's these conversations to have, because without that, then it, it shows that the boys actually were a bit disorganised or they don't know what's happening, and it, it puts them at ease. It has so. extra stress. Yeah, exactly. You don't, need to, so I think, yeah, you don't need that. So I think the communication is, is huge. You can't over-communicate. Um, yeah. I, was, um, I was reading something, and it said that vision is actually the art of seeing something that is invisible to others um, yeah, so point. so I was right. actually pondering on that and I was thinking you know that is so true because we do we do have I have a personal vision my husband and she has a personal vision and yes it's okay to have personal visions and set personal goals yeah. 
But when you are in a couple and when you are in a relationship, somehow or the other it needs to be an added vision where you see yourself as a couple. Yeah, definitely. And 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 then you have when you have kids, you have to bring, you have to tweak, and you have to change that vision Correct. so that you it becomes a family mission. Yeah, that's what Stephen Covey talks about. That's yeah. what he does. Habits yeah. highly effective people. He says like that. You need to have a family vision. Yeah. What where do you want to take this family? Where's it going? Yeah. Um, that's amazing. It is. I think it's absolutely amazing. Um, now, when we, for me, having a vision is actually having this. You know, you, you when we talk about a vision, I'm already looking further. You know, yeah. looking in the distance. My hand is moving towards a distance because we know that a vision is something that's long term. We are looking towards something. And to get there, we end up having little goals, like making sure that the communication is right, who's picking up the kids, mm -hmm. and so on, making sure that nobody can have all state night. So for me, having this vision, it is like a picture that I create in my mind, and that actually gets me excited, because yeah. it, changes okay. that, yeah. it changes that vision into a bit of a passion, you know, I'm going to get there. I just it's like your colouring the photo. So it's a black and white vision, but you're colouring it in. You yeah. colour it in. And have you? I don't know. I just kind of come up with it. It's okay. And so it's, it's seeing something visually. You know, you, we all have these visions. And, and I see so many couples making this, this mistake of knowing there's a vision somewhere up there. But they find it so hard communicating and translating that picture up there into reality. Mm. Now, um, you know, like what Gandhi just said, you know, he said that uh, you need to start your vision today. You know, we are so good. Human beings are so good. We're such excellent procrastinators. You know, we, I love all your giggles. <laughs> <laughs> I love, because I know it's like, yeah, it's true. Yeah, yeah and, and, you know, um, so, so we all, we human beings, you know, we tend to procrastinate a lot. We'll do it tomorrow. We'll set a vision for us tomorrow. But tomorrow de definitely doesn't come. Mm. And then what happens? There's a bit of friction. There's a bit of uneasiness because a few years down the line, we are following different directions. We become the, that iceberg that's slowly drifting away. Yeah. And when it's time for you to say, hey, well, what have we done for the last five years? And, you know, uh, and then you start to realize that we should have set a vision. So I'm just recapping. Uh, so you spoke about discipline, yeah. how important discipline is. You spoke about making sure that you follow through things. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and all of us agree that it's so important to make sure that we do have a vision as a couple. You know, leave it alone personal visions, but having a couple vision. Yeah. And, um, I actually am going to very quickly sum up my three things. And I know that this is the fourth spark, the relationship spark that I'm speaking about. So the fourth one is all about vision. And as you hear Farah and Afro speak about, you know, why it's important for them to set their vision so that they could see that success and they could see that horizon getting brighter and brighter and the picture is getting more colorful. So for me, my three top tips would be, uh, I personally, I can't handle rigid, you know, where, where something is rigid. Okay. So for me, I feel my vision, as time goes on, we need to allow ourselves to tweak, change, okay. chop. Okay. If something's not working out, you know what, say, you know what, guys, let's tweak it. Yeah. And um, I, we, we give, so that's the first thing. So being able to give yourself permission to tweak things so that it fits. Because if something is not fitting and we don't tweak it, it's yeah, can't it. Fit, we can't force it. And square pegs and round holes. Exactly. <laughs> and the second one is um, that um, ensure we all may have a vision up here, but if we don't action it, it just becomes a dream. <laughs> yeah, just a picture. Yeah. It just becomes a dream and we dream about it. So the second one is we have to action it. and. The third one is all about giving and spend, giving your relationship time to actually think about a vision. You know, my best friend is a roll of white paper because we all use that roll of white paper. It's a pound from the pound shop and we That's will spread it out and we will jot down things and mind map things to see where our vision wants to, you know, has a relate has a relation I. And now, especially when you have couples in business, has business partners, the partners too. So you're actually covering two things. You're covering a vision 
um, has a married couple, but you're also covering a vision, has a business partner. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. it's so important to make sure that, you know, you, you have these visions that you have has both. Um, it's sometimes completely different. Yeah. It is completely different. Really, your five-year goals are completely different yeah. to, uh, you know, being, uh, having a marital goal as such, you know, being married. So um, I feel that it's so important to make time. Now, with my family, from the time when Anesh and I, we got married, which is like 25 years ago, uh, on, I know most people on New Year's Day, uh, you know, we all, after the night's party, we yeah. have a lie-in. And that day for us is always very calm. Yeah. So we usually use the evening of that on New Year's Day to actually sit down and talk about what do we want to do be this year. and do yeah. this year. Uh, but it's not the only day we tweak. Uh, and then when we had our kids coming into our life, we, should, we used to do the same. You know, on New Year's Day, this is what we do. And uh, it's been working for us. Mm. And it's, it's you know, that's, that's part of having a vision and growing your vision. So guys, any other last minute, uh, not last minute, last tips on what would you like to see for other people, young couples, you know, that's um, in a relationship for a shorter time than me, 25 years. So what are some of your last tips? I would say that a lot of people plan a wedding, don't they? They have no, a vision for that point. day. And then yeah, when point. that beautiful wedding is over, mm -hmm. there is no plan going forward from then onwards. And you can feel very um, disheartened because it's the, the anti-climax because you've built up this big wedding, almost going on top of a hill and then falling flat mm. rather than having a plan how you're going to come down or what, where are you going next. And I think for, for me, that's when we planned our wedding, I knew what our vision looks like beyond that. So yeah. the feeling for me wasn't that, it wasn't like that. Yeah. But for many that's people that I've spoken to and some of the, I wrote a blog about the wedding blues. And when I was researching, I found so many people literally feel so depressed and upset because they don't, what do you do after the wedding? Yeah. Because they you're coming back home, else. you're still going to work, everything's the same, you know, there's the sink, uh, there's the dishes in the sink and the little bickering will start. Yeah. But if you haven't sat down and thought about how you're going to communicate with each other, what respect level you're going to show mm -hmm. to each other, you're not going to kind of move forward successfully. Yeah. And that's how you drift apart because there's no plan. And also picking up things as they're not right. You know, we do this a lot, don't we? Mm. Like this week we realised that we haven't spent enough time together because it's been half term. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm aware that I can see Afra's uh, disheartened the being like, well, she's not spent time. And he said it. The good thing is he and speaks men up. are big babies. Sorry? <laughs> men are big babies that need some yeah. TLC. He does. Everybody He's does. quite vulnerable. <laughs> <laughs> uh, shows his vulnerability yeah. and it, that's encouraged. You know, I encourage it. I want to see what's going on. Um, and she's very similar, by the way. Yeah. When yeah. he needs his TLC. Yeah, and um, I can feel that, but, but we talk about it rather than well, brushing yeah. under the carpet. Because if you brush under the carpet for years, then you're just going to big, be a massive mm -hmm. fight. Um, so we just have our little conversations throughout, but in yeah. some kind of a, a civilized manner well, so yeah. that we don't, um, yeah. You don't wait for the pressure to build up and then no. lower. No, a little, no. Bit, a little bit, little bit down. Little so there's down. there's always a little yeah. snappy here and there, but I'm... I think what you said about um, oh, what's that piece you said about giving yourself time I think because we're running around so much and this is even 50 years ago people have got this like opinion that the social media is killing relationships and like you said all distractions all the same I think you just got to spend that time and be conscious actually if I've left home gone to work come pick the kids from uh, school cook the dinner and then maybe the partner comes in and then you're too tired to do anything and that's like living every day Monday to Friday mm. and the weekend you might see your friends and then you've not slowed down for any point in time to spend that time so you connect gotta, with your partner yeah you've got you gotta make that time carve it in there somewhere we call um, it watering the plant don't we? watering the plant otherwise yeah. the plant's gonna die oh yeah definitely. definitely so you definitely yeah. gotta spend that time <laughs> and I want to finish off by saying a part of your vision has a couple uh, needs to be having fun and um, and you have to make time to have fun yeah. you know having laughter you know it doesn't need to fun doesn't need to be an expensive thing where you have to spend money it's some things and part of your vision must include simple things in your relationship because when you 
when you bypass the simple things, you would never be able to see the big things. Yeah. So thank you so much, guys. Oh, and you can, thank you for having us. <laughs> you can catch these two gorgeous people on Facebook, Grid City Fitness. And if you want to come and join the pain like me, <laughs> please come join uh, join Afro and Farah. They they fat people. They will will. <laughs> crack the whip. Crack the whip. <laughs> they will crack the whip, but guys, um, I, I, <laughs> I would love to wish you everything of the best. And uh, when you are sitting tonight or tomorrow, do not procrastinate. When you're sitting down with your partner, talking about what is your vision, trying to paint that picture that you have in your mind, and trying to explain what you have in your mind, be clear. Make sure you put in some fun. And um, yeah, have a wonderful, wonderful time in setting that vision because that vision, when actioned, is actually a very fulfilled, content life. Be blessed always. Keep smiling.